Welcome to the Business Owner Spotlight Series. My name is Gabriel Moore. I am the senior partner here at Action Coach Vanguard in Central Iowa. And today I have the lovely Nikki Wallace, the owner of Hired DSM, as my guest. We're going to be talking about her business, journey to business ownership, challenges, best practices, and share a peek into what it's really like to build and operate a business. If this is your first time on the channel, be sure to like and subscribe to get notifications when we drop new conversations just like this one. Nikki, thank you so much. Welcome, and thanks for being here today. Absolutely. Thanks for having me. Appreciate it. Please give us a uh, brief overview of your background and tell us a little bit about Higher DSM. Yeah. So I... Um... I'm from Fort Dodge, actually, originally. So I've lived in Des Moines now for uh, since after college. Um, but I worked for a large um, firm, uh, recruiting firm in Des Moines. So I was one of the first um, few, there was, I was like the 10th or 11th hire um, at the company back in 2012. Um, and I always say I had a great opportunity because um, they were just trying to grow this, this market. Um, and there was kind of a core group of us that got in and, and we were able to really um, learn the ins and outs of, of the business and kind of what, what we sell, what we do, what, all the things. So um, fast forward um, to 20, um, 2021, I left the, the company and the firm that I'd been with. Um, and I thought I was actually going to be a stay-at-home mom, which I did not tell you this fun fact about myself, but um, <laughs> I, you know, the, almost three years later, uh, we have a, a company with, you know, seven employees and all the things. So um, after leaving the firm, um, you know, really, I, I got asked to do some contract recruiting for a company. Oh, um, okay. And I thought, you know, at first that, that that wasn't really what I wanted to do, but turns out um, I took the the role and and really fell in love with it and realized that, you know, recruiting was where my passion was, mm -hmm. um, is. And, um, you know, I also kind of felt like, hey, I, I could do this for more people. So um, I really started um, asking, I, I reached out to a bunch of people that I had met kind of in my journey at the firm that I was with before um, and said, you know, you know me, um, you know what I can can do and I have this crazy idea um you know will you kind of give me your thoughts feedback and everything so um so higher dsm um was born uh, our original name was nmw consulting um I had to come up with the name in about 10 minutes so um <laughs> my initial <laughs> what, it, what it was not really knowing where it was going to go at that point so um I come from a very entrepreneurial background I always knew um, that I was going to own a company at some point, just never would have dreamed it would have been a, a staffing firm. Um, but I'm I'm grateful for where where it's gone. So um, I so higher DSM as it is today. Um, we actually expanded and rebranded um, in January of 23 is kind of when we went into the market with higher DSM. But uh, really, we offer kind of two different. Um, recruitment options for our clients. So um, we offer uh, what's called RPO or recruitment process outsourcing, um, which really is think of it as like how you would hire an accounting person, right? Like our, an accounting firm would outsource all of your accounting. So like on the retainage RPOs, kind of thing. Exactly. Like gotcha. Yep. Exactly. So uh, we work like, uh, for example, right now we work with a, a construction company in town where the main goal is that we really hire some of their higher niche positions that their team really doesn't have time to fill. Um, but so um, we've done a lot of different setups. So that's kind of fun because you can be nimble on that side mm -hmm. in terms of you know, hey, we have 15 recruiters on our team, but we just don't have time to get to X, Y, Z positions. Or, um, you know, we've worked with, a, you know, some scaling companies too, where it's like, hey, we don't even have an HR team. Um, yeah. And so we come in and do full cycle recruiting um, and kind of even set up their process and uh, procedures, kind of all of that that goes with the recruitment process. So we so you really handle focus. recruitment and HR services for other companies. Is that accurate? Yeah, more so on the recruitment process. And, and really right. what I call it is the candidate experience. So it's okay. both the internal and the external. Like what is, Very good. you know, when these companies, when companies start to scale or they're really behind, they're trying to grow, um, you know, a lot of times the candidate experience is lost. So, you know, how yeah. is, how is the 
how do we look on job boards? How are, how's that first interaction? You know, what's the email? Does there, you know, is there spelling errors? Is, is, does it look like spam? Um, but, you know, I think the candidate experience is, is really top of mind on the, the RPO side and how do we enhance that for our clients to recruit on their behalf? So, okay. Well, and what then, kind uh, of, oh, I'm sorry, go ahead. No, I was just going to say, and then on the flip side, we also um, went, um, I had a, a lot of old clients that said, hey, if you ever go into the traditional staffing side, we would love to partner with that, um, which is kind of how we got into the back into the traditional staffing. So um, we offer contract, contract to hire, direct placements, kind of all that, what you would think of um, the normal uh, partnership with an agency on that side as well. So we have the the two sides of the business to kind of be able to come to the table with different solutions to, to different client, client needs and that space. Okay. Um, and, and at least it all fits under the same model too. I mean, it's not like yep. you're doing a completely random thing. Yeah. What, what kind of, uh, what's, tell me about the current role you play in your business. Yeah. Depends on the day. <laughs> on that stage. <laughs> which hat, Derek, which hat are you wearing today? Yeah. yeah go ahead. Um, yeah. So, um, I really try now to focus on, um, sales, uh, specifically, um, and then obviously there's like the overall strategy. So how are we growing? Where are we going? Who are we partnering with? Um, in the firm I worked for previously, we weren't even given like a budget or we weren't able to join chambers and join different groups, which is kind right. of wild now, like being on the other side. Um, respect it, but that's just, um, it's a different way to think about it. Um, and so, you know, a big part of my role as we've really expanded and, and got some good folks internally to um, continue to grow and take on more clients um, has been just who, you know, who can we partner with to, um, you know, accel accelerate our growth, our brand, um, and also, you know, work smarter, not harder type of thing. Um, so those are really the two, the business strategy um, partnerships, you know, who in the, the Des Moines um, area is where we primarily work right now. Um, right. Who can we partner with to, you know, give back our time, our resources. Um, right. And um, are you the, are you the yeah. only owner of the business? Yep, I'm 100% owner. So 100% owner, and so now, yeah. so not only are you doing all that stuff, but you also have to handle all the ownership responsibilities too, right? I do. Yeah, Fun those stuff. are like <laughs> those are Saturday. My husband and I actually split up. We have two little kids, um, and okay. we split up our our weekends, and I get Saturday and he gets Sunday because he okay. also has a big role. Um, and on Saturdays is kind of when I dive into all my accounting because I I um, yeah. Part of our accounting team and um our you know insurance and all of that yeah that's so let's that's podcast right let's say that uh i am looking for uh i'm looking for you know recruitment i'm looking for hires or, or yep. new, new staff what what makes me the perfect customer for you what makes me so that that i'm just that ideal client and not necessarily i don't want to say i'm looking for people call us what what does that perfect client look like to you? You know, there's A, yep. B, C, D clients, right? What's the A client look like for you? Yeah, I know. And I get asked this a lot too. And it, it's taken me a while to kind of reflect on like, why are we different? What Who do sure. we want to work with? And I think that's been, I'm giving you a long answer, I realize, but that's I okay. think that that's been something fun in my journey um, is working for such a big firm before we were, you know, we, we had to hit our numbers. We had to work with everybody. Right. And uh, turns out when you work for yourself, um, you choose who you work with. And um, we, you know, I don't want to partner with everybody. We don't need to partner with everybody. Um, you know, I want to partner with people that want to partner and see us as that um, extension of their team. Um, so I, I say all of that because really the everybody is hiring. Everybody needs to hire. We're in a weird, um, you know, economy right now or, or, you know, COVID's changed a lot of the hiring oh, yeah. um, for folks. But um, I think a, a really ideal client for us is somebody that uh, truly wants to partner um, with a firm. So they see us as, um, you know, not just an extension of their team, but like, hey, you know, you are the SME in this space and and we're not and we don't want to hire for that internally. So, um, you know, they see the benefit in, in outsourcing that. Um, and the reason I say that is, um, you know, I think in our industry were commoditized a lot, like the staffing mm -hmm. firms and, you know, oh, you're another staffing agency. Mm -hmm. um, and I think 
the best relationships that I've had. Some of the first people that signed my agreements when I, I went out on my own, they are the ones that, you know, they welcomed me, not, not maybe at first, <laughs> but, huh. uh, you know, 10, 12, 13 years ago, um, you know, we've been able to build a relationship where I understand their business, they trust me, um, and and I can really be an advocate for them and their company um, versus, you know, hey, you're competing against five different agencies to fill this welding spot, like, you right. know. Um, well, I, what, I think, what, okay. yeah. well no, what makes your, what makes your business unique? So yeah. we've got, we've got this ideal client that's coming to get you, that's coming yeah. to, you know, when when they finally do arrive, what's your unique selling proposition? What makes your business unique above all other of your competition? Yeah, I would say our um, local, we're local in Des Moines. I think that is one thing that hit me. Um, you know, there's, I was at an event um, uh, several years ago and I looked around and I'm like, why are there no agencies here? You know, the recruiting business can be lucrative and, and why is we were at a, um, it was Bravo event and, um, you know, there's the, the performing arts and all of these agency. And it's like, okay, why is, why are there no agencies essentially giving back to some of these community um, places? And it's like, well, because even though we were local to Des Moines and all of this stuff, you know, that we would sell when I was in my prior firm, like all of that money is going back to Baltimore. Um, that's not staying here local in our community. Right. Um, and I think that really hit me. And um, when we do grow, like that is a big thing for me is, you know, can we give you know, a percent of our net profit to the local communities that we're in so that that, that money can stay there um, and, and can be locally used. Um, I also, we have an awesome staff. So as we've grown, everybody um, comes from the agency world. So um, we all have experience in different, I've, as we've grown, I've picked people with, you know, complementary skills to myself and, and the sales people that we have. But, um, you know, we come with a lot of experience and, um, you know, and we, you know, you've learned over the years kind of what works, what doesn't work. Um, right. Uh, so the local to, element, the we, local element, Nikki is, is absolutely. Yeah. And I'll it? be honest. I didn't, that didn't like hit me honestly until like a year into my firm. And I was wow. like, why is nobody here, you know, doing yeah. this? Oh, you know, let's get, let's get rid of that Des Moines money. Right. Yeah. yeah. What's one thing? Well, uh, what's one thing that you wish more people knew about your business? About our business, um, I think uh, you know, about higher DSM specifically, I think how flexible we can be um, because we are a small firm and we do have a hell of a lot of skill on our team. Um, you know, we can be as nimble to, you know, do, you know, whatever step I was on a call right before this and they're trying to figure out how to hire a hundred people in this pretty skilled um area and you know it's like I could sit there on the phone and and I didn't have a plug and play we have to do this it's like well what's right. your end goal right like right. what's what's your goal in hiring these people um and don't just tell me it's to get butts and seats and get the job done it's like you know there's a lot of things that go into why you're hiring and I want to know yes. about that so that we can get the right solution for you that's interesting that you actually asked the why question that's not something you know, because people tend to black and white it, right? There's not, it's I, a, a, I need a people. That's it. End of yeah. story. And, and you know, diving a little deeper, asking questions prior to uh, diagnosing is just a little bit important. And and yeah. as you're, you're a doctor, isn't it? I mean, right. here, take these pills, but I don't need to ask any questions, uh, you yeah. know. Yeah. Well done. Yeah. Yeah. At the end of the day, like you're, you know, how I hire people, whether I, I have you on a retainer or have you through our agency, like the process is the same, Right. Uh, but you know, how you pay or how, like what your setup is, or do you want them on a contingent basis versus, right. you know, you, like you need somebody for a three-year project and then they're going to be done. Or do you want them on your books? Um, you know, that we just do like sh the straight hiring for you. There's a lot of different ways. And I think, yeah, people don't really always, um, the RPO model is 
an amazing model for, for people that are doing a lot of hiring. Um, we've mm -hmm. used it in healthcare a little bit as well, um, where right. instead of having a bunch of agency nurses, it's like just partner with us. And, and we partnered with a long-term care facility um, that we were able, we got on the call with them every week. They'd tell us which community to focus on. Um, and we wow. would do all the sourcing and recruiting for their RNs and LPNs, saved okay. them a ton of money, right? Because they're not paying uh, the agency fee at that point um, per so, head. So you kind of really have like really two major marketing channels here because yeah, at three technically, because you're going to be marketing to uh, businesses that need the, the hiring services. You're going to be marketing to um, workers. You're going to be marketing to people to come work for you. Yep. Um, in that field so that you can then uh, sell that service to other businesses. And then you're going to be hiring your own staff to actually manage those, those operations. Yep. Um, when it comes to marketing, what is, um, maybe not for all three, but you can pick the one that you want to talk about, but what, yep. what has been your most successful marketing strategy? I'm laughing as you're saying this because this has been a revolving uh, topic of conversation in our group. Um, because I, I'll be honest, when I started this, I did not realize how much marketing, and then there's marketing, and then there's ten layers of marketing, right? So you're just, <laughs> hey, Welcome hi, to marketing. It, it's a lot. Um, so that that was a hat that I actually hired for and passed off earlier this year um, because it's it, it is just a whole nother job. So. It's a uh, monster, isn't it? It really yeah. is. I partnered with a digital recruiting firm or a digital firm, geez, a digital marketing firm um, that helped us kind of do a bunch of stuff last year. And then she actually said, why don't you hire someone like right out of school that would be interested in really taking on a project and, and kind of working with a blank slate in some ways to help us sure. evolve. And she's been amazing. So um, that's amazing. So yeah. Well, well what's your book? Okay. Yeah. Yeah, I was going to say, so the original question was, what's our number one, what's been our number one, um, you know, for candidates, I think the marketing, um, just being active, like the time to fill and like the time. Um, and I think that's where elaborate um, on active. What do you mean by that? Yeah. So you know, a lot of people just will post a position on, you know, there's all these job boards now, right? right there's right. Um, Indeed, there's the, you know, talent, yes, there's there's recruiter, recruiter. yeah, all the things. And you can spend a lot of money on all of them. <laughs> they'll all sponsor your jobs. They'll all do that. And I think, um, you know, marketing, it's kind of essential. Like we, we almost have to use some of these tools. Um, if sure. I told you every month how, how much we spend on some of these tools, it's a little nauseating, but, um, <laughs> but on the flip side, like how do we, um, elevate like our, our internal tools and our people, you know, so the recruiters are actively um, on some of these job boards. And so it's, we're not just on the job boards, but we're following up. We're um, making sure that Got everything's it. current and up to date. So that's a daily thing that we're going yeah, in. Yeah. You don't set it and forget it. Up. No, not at all. Um, what, what yeah. What's your budget look like then? So when you're, you know, I'm always curious about this, but what percentage of like monthly sales are typically invested back into marketing. Do you guys have a marketing budget that you you stick to on percentage wise out of your revenue? Yeah, we do. And actually okay. the firm that I worked with last year really helped us look. Um, and so like my marketing budget actually encompasses like, you know, your your networking groups that you're in and, and yep. different things like that. Um, so yeah. I think we're at like 10% of revenue goes into the marketing. Um, and if anybody ever, just to plug our digital marketing firm we worked with, she was amazing. So if anybody ever has, uh, needs anybody like that, they are they were great to work with. They actually gave us this whole hub um, that kind of broke down where to spend our time, why to spend our time, where, and, and you know, gave us some more tools versus, again, just kind of regurgitating information right. um, and then hoping that we can figure it out on our own. So that's amazing. Um, and and. The marketing, obviously what happens then, right? We get leads in. Now this will be on the client side. So not necessarily the hiring side, yeah. but on the client side, um, many business owners suffer. And, and if you're one of these, then you'll understand. But uh, many business owners suffer from lack of lead tracking. Do you track leads that come in? And if you do, how do you do it? What's your process? 
Yeah. So we actually just switched to a new CRM this year um, that's built into our applicant tracking system. So oh, cool. um, a, a gap that we really found last year as we were growing, um, you know, because we prior to last year, we had only three employees and we were just specifically doing the RPO side. So adding the staffing component really, um, you know, was a little bit of madness last year, but we, we survived and we're, we're growing. So, um, so we found a tool that we were able to utilize, um, and put all of our applicants and our clients in one system. And then they kind of delineate within the system, if it's a contact on a client or, or an applicant. So, um, for us, it became an efficiency tool, um, you know, increase our efficiency so that all of our information is in because we do have the two sides of both the clients and the, the um, candidates. It helps right. us kind of bridge that gap so that the recruiters have the information on jobs that they need. Oh, that's um, huge. Vice versa. So that's yeah. huge. getting that all consolidated like that. Um, you know, you don't have to click from one program to the next program or the next yeah. program. Mind boggling how, how we still do that though, but you know, you don't know what you don't know, right? Yeah. And investing in the right tools was a huge takeaway for me last year, kind of going um, mid-year. Last year, we uh, sat down as a team because we had kind of stumbled through the first six months and it was like, you know, what's going well, what's not going well. Um, and we were extremely inefficient with our systems. Um, there's a lot of technology at our hands, our fingertips mm -hmm. with as a small business owner that you're sold, you know, go to use this platform. It's great. Go use that. But my and they're biggest, probably all great. <laughs> yes. My biggest piece of advice then, and what I really learned is like, get real industry specific. There's probably tools that are specific to your industry because that has nice. been a, a, a game changer for us because um, it's almost, you know, analysis paralysis with all of this technology that's coming at us all the time. Um, and, you know, when we really zoned in on like, okay, what functions do we need? Where are we going? what's going to support us in both of those uh, question with the, both of those questions as we grow. Um, yeah. And that's helped us tremendously um, just even Q1 of two, you know, 24. So that's, that's amazing. And it's, it's so brilliant when systems come together and start actually uh, yeah. becoming a well-oiled machine. That's such a great feeling. Yeah. Um, we're kind of getting a little late on time here. So I want to, uh, we've covered a lot and I want to, um, uh, let people know that they're more than welcome to come back, watch this video over again. Uh, Nikki's been touching on some things that I think are critical uh, to uh, take into business uh, life, uh, especially that consolidation of systems. That's a big one. Lots of really good stuff. But as we begin to wrap up, Nikki, I've got a few rapid fire questions, quick top of head answers for each of these. So this would be one word or one sentence answers. You ready to rock this? Sure. All right, let's go. Hopefully. <laughs> Used to be on my toes, right? What is the key to success for you? Um, I think just what we talked about is uh, understanding your efficiencies. Understanding your efficiencies. I love it. What is your one piece of advice for other business owners? Have a good group of mentors that you can call. Let's go. Yeah, got to oh. have that. Essential. Mentorship. Yeah. We think yeah. it's a little powerful here at Action Coach. True. Yeah. That's a plug for you. I didn't even think about it. <laughs> yeah, <Yeah>. absolutely. <laughs> what is what is one book you're reading now or have read most recently? So I am not as much of a book reader as I'm am a podcaster. Um okay. so I Ed Milet, he is like my number uh, one business person. Um, I love Ed Milet. Yeah. So he had one just recently on how you utilize your time. Oh, yeah. um, and I I do love his book too, uh, The Power of One More. Yep. Read it. Uh, Ed's one of my favorites out there. Uh, he is uh, uh, critical when it comes to mindset and sales yeah. business. He's absolutely wonderful. Yeah. If you had to choose only one area of your business, you could immediately improve tomorrow. What would it be? Um, probably sales. Just increasing our sales team has been a juggle. It's the chicken or the egg, right? Yeah. <laughs> Legitimately. Yeah. Before we get into our final question of the day, um, how can, uh, Nikki, how can others learn more about you or your company? How can they get in contact? 
Yeah. So our website has a ton of information. We keep building on that um, with our new marketing person. Um, but hire-dsm.com uh, is our website. Um, we're also all over LinkedIn. Um, hire uh, DSM has a LinkedIn page as well as myself, Nikki Wallace, um, and then Facebook as well. Brilliant. And last question of the day. Yeah. What is most inspiring to you today? Today, I just love talking trap. So anytime I can get on, um, you know, even just our conversation about networking and um, I think yeah. just like the power of partnerships and, and um, you know, having people to bounce ideas off of. Um, so it's not always my husband. <laughs> um, <laughs> I think, you know, it's just it's the everybody always says leadership and, and entrepreneurship specifically is extremely lonely. Um, and I have felt that this past year. And, uh, you know, really the, the, the reason I keep going is I believe in myself and my team and, and what we're doing. Um, but also I, I have people to call. So I think, um, you know, that's always, it's always good to hear there's more people out there. Nikki, we believe in you too. Uh, just letting oh, you know, thank you. Yeah, yeah. you're going to rock it as we, uh, as we finish up, I just want to express my gratitude because it's been a, it's, it's really been a fantastic uh, uh, learning about your journey, both as like a business and an owner. And uh, thank you. Thank you for letting me uh, peek behind the scenes yeah. per se to understand more about you and your business. And I'm, I'm really, I'm really excited to see where you and your business go next. Thank you. I appreciate that. Absolutely. Thanks for having me. I appreciate the time. Oh, the, no, the thanks is all ours. Getting people like you to, you mentioned loneliness loneliness really is a big thing. And I don't mean like lonely as I need people, but understanding the things that you're going through, there's a lot of yes. people that can't. And so um, surrounding yourself by more of people like us and our and fellow business owners is yep. so important. And thank you for being yeah. a part of that. Absolutely. This has been the Business Owner Spotlight with Nikki Wallace of Hired DSM and your host, me, Gabriel Moore with Action Coach Business Coaching. Thank you for watching and we'll see you next time.